speaker up here is Patty Julet. She is a GIS supervisor for the LAPD, and she manages the GIS database for the 911 software application and develops ETL processes for a Mongo database. She earned her Master's of Science in GIST from USC and uh, has worked as a teaching assistant for a coding boot camp. And Patty has been automating processes with Python for nearly 10 years and has more recently delved into data science. All right, take it away, Patty. Thank you, Nina. It's an honor to be here. Oh, gosh. Let's see if you like what I'm going to say. Um, so, yeah, I think my talk dovetails really nicely with Jason's talk previously because it's looking at actually using the data. And, yeah, as Nina said, I've been working with Python since, like, 2010, and I realized I love it, so. <laughs> So I'm going to be running code through Jupyter Notebook for this talk. Are people familiar with that, Jupyter? Yeah? Awesome. Good. And I just have a few slides to get started. All right. So pondering public police data with Python. And just to reiterate, yes, I work as a GIS supervisor with the LAPD. I've been there about almost a year and a half. And the big part of what I do is, like Nina said, I work to provide the GIS database for the 911 system. So when someone calls in that the address can be located if they don't have um, like location technology enabled on their phone. So that's that's a lot of work, but I like it. I feel like hopefully it's for for the good. Um, and I also work using PyMongo, everything Python with me as much as possible to, we're moving one of our databases to Mongo and I work with some wonderful people on that. And yeah, just learning more about ETL processes and yeah, and then the rest of the time when I have time, I do data science, which isn't always very much sometimes, but since I had worked as a teaching assistant last year, that really gave me a good like brain download on all these latest technologies, so that's why I'm using Jupyter Notebook today, probably. All right. So this is the boring stuff, but this talk references methods of analyzing public police department data. Well, that's not that boring. Okay, is not to be interpreted as the best or only method of processing this data. And I'm just to be clear, I'm not here as a spokesperson for the LAPD. I've only been there a year and a half or so, so they would have a lot of other people that can better speak uh, to LAPD. So it's just me. All right, yeah, so we're just going to run through uh, the goals of the talk, which is going through data access, cleansing, data wrangling, visualization, and I'm not going to touch on machine learning too much because of the inherent bias in a lot of those systems. I'm not doing that today. Sorry if you're looking for that, but yeah, then we'll just get into some examples. Um, yeah, so data access, that's the first part of the process. It'll, this talk uses open data and also data from GeoHub, and I should say I'm, I load the LAPD data onto GeoHub for LA City, so just so you know. What's nice is that uh, governments a lot of times are loading data onto open data. Uh, this will be working with CSV files. And is it always true though that the data you need can be gotten from open data? Is that true? True, false? False. You guys are the best. Yeah, so sometimes you need to do web scraping and 
Um, I do that with a little project I help the media relations division with at my department. I do some web scraping, and I do it for like other stuff too. Uh, it's uh, using beautiful soup or selenium. Y'all are, you know about that. Those are good libraries. So anyway, but this talk is just focusing on open data and a little bit of GeoHub data. So the first the first few notebooks we will review are um, going to be dealing with data cleansing. And the example we're going to look at is removing duplicates. Another thing you might have to deal with is like thinking about null values or missing data. Like how do you deal with that? I mean, a lot of this analysis kind of stuff, you have to make these decisions and then just sort of share that in your results. This is what I did. Are there any other data cleansing examples anyone can think of or that they deal with? Yes. Okay, dirty data that's not been well rendered. Yeah, you're reminding me of, um, I worked a little bit with this neural network to predict hand, sorry, to predict words from handwriting and I guess that some of that data was kind of dirty because uh, it wasn't legible what that data was, but I'm sure you have more examples too. Yeah, and then we'll get into data wrangling, which is shaping the data for analytics. And this is really an iterative process. As you're doing it, you're always revising how you're thinking about the data. You know, I find a lot of times at night when I can't sleep, that's when I'll have a good idea on another way to approach what I'm doing, whatnot. So these are, I just threw these words up here. It's kind of random. <laughs> looking, but it's dealing with merging and pandas, which is sort of like comparable to joining in SQL, normalizing the data, um, that'll be good, and then indexing other statistical stuff you might do. Cool. So these are some of the libraries. Um, this refers to matplotlib, numpy, seaborn, pandas. All right, so this is one of the plots that is created. This is, okay, it's a little misleading. It says SFPD and LAPD public data. That's what I'm going to look at in the Jupyter Notebook. But this plot here is select crime counts by month from 2010 to January 2019. And on the x-axis are the months. I know it looks like super busy, but we're gonna see different ways of visualizing the data, but yeah, this is a different crime count for these months, for these years rather. You can see like a dip every every year here. Does anyone have an idea? February, very good. Yes, exactly. So yeah, it's a shorter month. So that's what's going on. And I know it's, well, I can't even hardly see it, but 2019, January 2019 is about in the middle here, so. I think that's good. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. This is the GitHub uh, URL for the data that I'm going to review in this talk. But you have some work to do. See, the data I loaded is from open data sources. It's, it was too large to like load in the, the free, uh, I just used a free GitHub account, so they said it's like, more than 100 megabytes, so you're going to have to download it. You have some work to do as well. So, yeah, this is it. Uh, let's review the README. Oh, that's good. Caution. Not to be, t this is just repeating what I said. This is representing a modern technology, technology including Jupyter Notebook and Python libraries. Uh -huh. uh, can't really see the screen super great, but okay, that's better. Yeah, there's some reference. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, and I tell you, install Anaconda 3, and typically Jupyter Notebook installs with Anaconda, and I'm running the code from a virtual environment. I don't know if you've, if you've seen other talks today, they talk about containers and whatnot, but I, I like virtual environments. It seems to work well, so I will open that up. Okay, so this is a repository on my machine. I'm using Ubuntu, and it also works on Windows. I use Windows a bunch as well. So I'm going to open my terminal. Yeah, and then I'm going to say source activate. I call it mar talk. Okay, so I activated my virtual environment. You can see it says mar talk here instead of base. So this is my virtual environment. It has all the libraries I'm working with for this talk. So now I'll say Jupyter Notebook. All right. There it is. All right. All right. So we'll start with this data cleanse example. And uh, just to repeat myself, this is using San Francisco police data. On, it's on incident reports. And I have here in this readme, yeah, you, you got to download the data from data.sf.gov.org, police department incident. So the link's in there. Uh, so that's fine. And then. Just that's this CSV file right here. Looks like I haven't touched it in the past 17 days. That's when I guess I downloaded it preparing for this talk. So first thing we're going to do is find the duplicates. And this is just to confirm, or this is sort of just to check to see like, are there duplicates? Because before you're going to do any analysis with data, you want to sort of see like, you want to get under the hood <laughs> Looking for duplicates is one way to do that. So open this up. So this will take about two minutes to run. I'll just point out some things going on in the cells, but it's pretty cool. Run all. So yeah, it takes about like two minutes to run at my network at my house. So I don't know. It's just importing the libraries, finding the variables, data frame dot head, printing out the top. By default, the top five values are um, produced. And we'll just wait. Uh, you see this? So it's actually running when you see this. God, what's it called? Hourglass. <laughs> Thank you so much. Whew. Um, yeah, so I want to look for duplicates by incident number. Uh, and then I'm using the set constructor on that field. And then I'm saying if there are, are instances where that field value, I mean, it should say field value, is greater than one, it'll say found duplicates and it writes it out to this file out dupe CSV file. Um, and then this will be pretty cool. We're going to check a given incident ID, so we're just going to check in this input CSV file if there were any duplicate found. So once we get there, uh, we'll see what it does. And I also want to point out this, oh no, it's in the next script. So I have nothing more to point out, I guess. All right, it's done. Whew. All right, cool. So here we're doing, I'll just run this cell, checking by given incident ID. So this number isn't really important, but you can see there are two entries for this phone calls harassing. And they were the same date and time. So I'm like, okay, well, that's a duplicate. So. 
Are they? Zero. Yeah, no entry. Yeah, you're right. But they have the same uh, incident number. Yeah, that's a good question, and my answer is I don't know that I'm, that's possible. That is definitely possible. I think it's also possible that certain departments will go through and revise incidents. So they, they keep the same incident in there. It'll be in there twice or maybe three times. So now I'm going to open up duplicates remove. And this, this runs pretty fast. I think. Yeah, I wanted, I wanted to point out this drop duplicates. This is a nice pandas command. When I first wrote this script, like a using the CSV library, and I had it at like 10 or 12 lines of code. It was super complicated. And then just a few weeks ago, I was like, there's got to be a simpler way because I was like looking at it for this talk and I'm like, I don't know how to comment on this thing. It's like, but then I found this drop duplicates command and I'm saying to keep the last entry. I think the default is first for drop duplicates. Is one right or wrong? I don't know. You have to make that decision in your analysis. So I'm saying to keep the last entry. All right, it stopped running, so I'll just go back to this last cell. This is the same incident. You can see it's only in here once. Phone calls, harassing. Yeah. So I have another one I want to review. So this is in duplicates fine. I'm running this last cell again. And you can see there's two entries. For this one, it ends in 448. And it says theft from locked vehicle, open or active. You see how there's a lot of null values, not a number of values here? So that's why I'm thinking they probably went back in and revised it and gave it more of a location. So if I copy this, this 448 value, so we see there's only one entry in the cleansed CSV file. And it does have the latitude and longitude because I specified to use the last. So data cleansing, how about that? All right, do, do, do. Uh, that's all right. Yeah, and just to review, the, the output it went into this um, resources folder. So three and four minutes ago, these, this is a clean CSV file, and this is one with all the duplicates. Just because there might be some finer tuning you need to do in looking at the duplicates, so I just, uh, I produce both, one that's clean and one that's clean, meaning no duplicates, and another that contains all of the duplicates. So you can really hone in on that if you want to. So great, that's the uh, uh, first bit of code I have. I think it's cool. <laughs> Clean file, oh. Okay, so that must be because there's more, like there's a lot of entries that aren't duplicates that are just uh, a single entry in the source table. So let's say there's 20 entries in the source table and 12 of them are entries that are in there twice, but then there's that other eight. So there would be 12 in the duplicate table, but then um, six, eight, 14, yeah. Does that make sense? Okay. You don't look convinced. How can we convince you? Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah, that just means that most of the entries are, aren't duplicate entries. There's only a single entry for them. So I put that all in the clean. I didn't say it's not clean like only the du single entries for all of the duplicates. It's single entries for all the data, regardless of whether it's a duplicate or not. You had a question. No, you're good. You? Did you have a question? Anyone? No? Yes. Yeah, that's a really good question. The question is how do you start with like figuring out how to do like data cleansing and I mean, I wouldn't really say I'm an expert at that. I think I don't know how how I figure that out. I think it was just for me. I was looking at another data set at work and I was just like just trying to like think about it and I was like, "Well, are there duplicate entries or not?" So that's sort of uh, how it took off. I remember uh, there was a data and donuts meeting a few weeks ago and someone said it's to look at data cleansing or yeah, at data cleansing, you can look at the rates of entries. So if you had uh, a, a date of entry field and you saw there were no entries for like 24 hours when usually there's like five every minute. So that would be another, I thought that was good. And I was like, ah, oh, I gotta do that now, but I just haven't yet. So yeah, you just sort of are thinking about it and I guess just take it from there. Yes. Dot B-A-T? D. Okay, so CSV files are very popular with, um, I got this data from the SF open data and I just downloaded it as a, a CSV. And the Pandas library, I'm sure some people here can back me up, they love, it loves CSV files. So it's structured data and uh, that's kind of like, I don't know. They they just work very well together. I I don't use that very much personally. Um, I I feel like the there's a certain amount of like bias in a lot of that kind of analysis and like people don't know how to fix it. So yeah, <laughs> like have you heard, I was reading recently about someone predicted that President Trump, like some model predicted President Trump would be president just because his face looks like previous presidents or are you all familiar with like the iris? the iris flower uh, analysis with, um, yeah, like with neural networks. Well, they, the basic idea with this iris data set, it's kind of like the standard when you're learning. You can predict the type of flower by the length of the, like the sepal or the length of, it doesn't really matter, the length of the stem. You should be able to predict what kind of flower it is. The thing is, people are not good. This is based on someone's measurements. Do you think people are always very accurate at measuring stuff? No, they're not. So it's like when you like attribute that kind of stuff to people, I uh, have a lot of it. I feel concerned about it. So yeah, all right. So this cleansing, it's fun. I like it. It's not super fancy. So now we're going to look at in this O1 folder. Um, this is looking at oops, serious crime, and we'll look at how I'm defining that. Do, do, do. O2, serious crime totals. All right, so first we're gonna look, all right, wait, open this readme, yeah. 
So this is, again, uh, you would have to download this data. It's not that bad. You just download it. And then you put it in the resources folder. So I, I have more files here, so, but don't worry. Yeah. So I got that four days ago from LAPD's public open data site. So we're going to look at crime by area, and area, uh, I don't know if I'm saying it right, but area and division are like kind of interchangeable, at least in this example, and there's 22 areas. For example, we would be not too far from the northeast area of the city, but then there's Hollenbeck, southwest, southeast. I can't name them all. <laughs> not right now. Um, yeah, so for this one, this takes a few more minutes to run, so I'm kind of cringing <laughs> about that, but let's just run all. Um, there's another thing I have to tell you. You're going to have to get something else, but we're just defining the libraries, the variables, doing this data wrangling um, where I'm working with parsing dates from the date occurred field, which is one of the fields in the open data. There's date occurred and date reported. Which one are you supposed to use? Uh, I mean, I don't know. It depends on, maybe that's what I'm using. Is it right? Uh, it's a decision. <laughs> Do -do -do. All right, so I actually, in the next notebook, I have this in bigger font, so I apologize, but I'm querying for a crime code description, I'm worried I'm talking too fast. Do you want to look at the df.head on this before we look at the query? Is that better? Yeah, all right. Well, then we're just going to hang out here for a minute. <laughs> Yeah, so the question is a very good question. I'm not really qualified to give an answer. It's about part one and part two crime. Yeah. I think if you're going to do any analysis on like that reclassification, if I was going to do it, I would just look at both ways it's classified just to sort of start seeing if you can pull out trends. I don't know, if that's not like a super great answer and I'm not sure I have a better one at this time, but yeah. Yep. All right, it's still running. Yeah, yeah, they definitely are, and I'm definitely aware of that, and I mean, yeah, you know what, that's a good point. Probably a different way to improve this would be to look for records where it's all null, or um, we, so um, sometimes when records are entered, if they don't have the person's age, they'll put zero. And so my favorite entry, and this is just like, I'm only talking about the publicly available data, but I saw like a two-year-old had stolen a shopping cart. And it was just the funniest visual because I don't really think they did, you know? I'm like, man, that was a bad baby. So I think those records um, could be thrown out. Uh, oh, right. I'm not ready to show you this. All right, let's go back. <laughs> Crime by area, right. So 
Yeah, this is the data. Um, you'll see there's uh, latitude and longitude provided, and that's generalized to the nearest uh, intersection just to protect people's privacy. So if you see that, that's not actually landing on someone's house. And I think it says it, it says that in the README. But yeah, so I'm querying out data that is coming from 2010 to oh, 1231, 2018. And it contains, uh, these pipes are just separators with pandas. So if the string contains aggravated murder, rape, burglary, larceny, vehicle theft, and a couple of entries, then that's, that's what I'm including in this analysis. Got that? Aggravated, murder, rape, larceny, kind of important stuff. <laughs> not, not that all crime isn't serious, but that's bad. All right, this is just like data wrangling. I'm always so self-conscious showing people my code. I'm like, ugh. But anyway, so then we have this file, and we're seeing um, this division, or area as I call it, in areas per square mile. And I did that just with GIS software. I got the area. This is more wrangling. So yeah, this was fun. When I first joined these two, OK, so I got the count by area name for these different areas. And I joined it with the CSV file I had, which shows this area in square miles of these different divisions. The first time I did it, well, I didn't have it specifying that it's uppercase. So then I was like really freaked out because it was totally, so you just have to be careful about all this stuff. So I'm saying string to upper, so it joins correctly here. So I don't know, just want to point that out. Yeah, so this is a select crime by area, normalized per square mile. This is from 2010 to 2018 in Los Angeles. So this is like decently, difficult to look at. Then I set it as a plotly plot, and um, in the repository, you're going to have to get your own username and API key. That's just how it goes. I'm not, I didn't share it. Um, so yeah, I divided the count by the area in square miles and just rounded it. That's why they all end in zero. Do, do, do. Yeah, I'll run this. I think it already popped up, but we'll just take a look. Yeah, so this is it in a plotly plot. So it's a little nicer, this kind of visualization, right? Because you can actually scroll over it. I know you're like, I can't say anything from where I'm sitting, but yeah, this is it. This is that first chart as a plotly plot. Cool. So I'm going to close a couple of these, and we'll go into the next notebook. Okay, so we'll go into serious crime, and this is going to harken back to that line plot that we saw in my um, PowerPoint. And here I have, I was trying to think of it, what's it called in Candyland? You had those shortcuts where you don't have to go all the way around. What's that called? Bridges, yeah, great, that's a good word. So I built a little bridge in this, so we don't have to go through all the cells, because, yeah, these are like more heavy duty scripts. <laughs> so I'm just going to very carefully, because if I start running it, no bridge for us. I'm going to run the first few, importing the libraries. Yeah, I just have this here, printing the versions of Plotly and Matplotlib, because these are in my estimation, these are rapidly developing libraries. So you want to make sure you're using like the current uh, libraries. And then I'm just defining file out data. And then I'm skipping. Again, these are the codes. I have it in bigger font on this. Aggravated merp rape, burglary, etc. All right. We can ignore that. So run from here. Do, do, do. So this is a simple chart. You don't like have to look at it. 
This is just trying to show you the initial pass. And uh, these are my comments. It says X is month, Y is count, Q is year, because I was really, I don't know, just really trying to grasp how to make this kind of a busy line plot, because I knew I wanted it, but I wasn't sure how to do it. And then, so this is just my comment on, okay, Q's year, well now it works, cool. So, whatever, so this is cleaning up the plot. So I'll run this cell. All right, so this looks, this is a little better, I think. It's a lot bigger. Colors are a little more different. And then I'm going to set as a plot lead plot. All right, here it is in Jupyter Notebook. It's looking a little stretched. Here's 2019, um, but it's saying like underscore line seven, underscore line eight, instead of the year, so it's not too good. We'll run this last one. All right, this looks cleaner. Just hold off on that previous one. I'm gonna run a flask app to show it looking a little more cleaned up. This is select crime by area from 2019 to January, sorry, 2010 to January 2019 in Los Angeles. So this is less busy, yes. A larger spike, what was that? Oh. That's November. I don't have a good answer, but you're making me think about my friend was robbed. Someone came in through her shower window because she like lived in a basement and it was like right around the holidays. So someone stole her. Maybe it's a holiday thing, but I'm just conjecturing. Yeah. But what I find interesting is like, why, what was so good in like 2014? That's like really low comparatively. Uh, and I do have January 2019, so you can see that. Um, and I also, I just, just one more thing before I forget come to your question, but do you remember reading like that Mayor Garcetti and Chief Moore that said that crime was down from 2017 as compared to 2018? Do you remember reading about that? I, I was reading about it, but that's what I saw as well for this serious crime. And I'm not saying I had like the exact same analysis as they did, but yeah, so that's good. Uh, yes. That do what? Yeah, so I'm working to like kind of create that position for myself, but I'm not there yet. Um, they definitely do do analysis of crime. Uh, everyone in that department is interested in that kind of stuff, um, but I don't really have like a ton of details on like how it's done specifically, just because like I'm a civilian, I don't, you know, kind of on the outside with some of that stuff, but it is, yeah. I th I think this is how they should be doing more of that analysis, like this is the right way. Some of the technology they're using is kind of old, so this is like better. All right, now we're gonna look at this in a flask app and then I'll just have like one or two other things to say. All right, 
It's just running on localhost. Yeah, so this is a, it doesn't, it's not fitting crazy good. I blame myself for that. But you can see the months as well. So it's kind of cool. And yeah, 2019 is the yellow dot there. Sure, I could have cleaned up the visualization even more. But yeah, that's kind of, these are some examples of analyzing the data. And I mean, would you, just to step back a little bit, but it's like, yeah, it's cool to have all these charts and plots, but would you want to actually create a different, hundred different charts for all the different ways you could look at the data? Like, I wouldn't. So then the next step would be like actually calling from a database. So you could query by area looking at select crime. And if I'm invited back next year, that's what I'll do. I'll have a database put together of this. Yeah, so the question is, is uh, yeah, this is just crime data. There's also a publicly available data set on arrests, but I'm not sure if we have any data on convictions. I just, I don't know, but I'll put on my email address and if I can find it, I will let you know. Right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. There's definitely more to this story than just looking at it, um, like by division. And it's also another way to normalize, like a normalize the data uh, in that first notebook by area, but it'd also be something could be maybe done from analyzing by the population, because there's probably more people living in Hollenbeck than, um, I don't know, West LA, well, no. I don't know, Topanga maybe? So, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Any other questions? Yes. I know. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, in my effort to make this kind of particular analysis more prevalent, I'm, I was showing some of these plots to my coworkers once, and they were like, can you just put that as two bar charts? I forget what the exact request was, but they wanted two bar charts for like 2017 and 2018, and I'm like, that's pretty simplistic, but I, I don't know. So yeah, no, I definitely agree. I mean, there's these even like this is line charts, bar charts. This is nothing scatter plot, nothing fancy. But then people ask me just for some totals for two years. <laughs> I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> That's fine if it's helpful. <laughs> so yeah, yes. Yeah. No, I don't know. Say a little more. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm honestly at the point where I'm, it's pretty like general. So yeah, I do think normalizing is important though to just kind of get a better sense of like the actual area that you're looking at. Um, yeah, it's pretty general what I am doing. I mean, it'd be good to make like a 
bell curve and just look at the distribution of the data, that would be good as well. But yeah, that's pretty general. Yes. Yeah, so the first thing I can say is if you want to do data science, like it's like super popular, everyone loves it right now, I would start, I mean, I started with doing automation and then everyone's like, Python's cool. And I'm like, what? Like, I've been doing this for years now and just because I've worked at like all sorts of city departments and they, they all need automation, let me tell you. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so I will say the course where I was a TA is called Trilogy, um, Trilogy Education Services. That's a six month course, it was three days a week, pretty intense. And I also, on my repository, I put up, a, like I really like the O'Reilly books, and there's a, um, like sort of a self-study course on Python 3, but I think, like, once you come up with a question and Let's, hopefully you can find the data or it's not too hard. Like accessing the data, you know, is a big part of it. So if you either find it through open data or web scraping, then come up with a question and you just kind of like, it'll, it'll just take off, I think. Yeah. Yes. Plotly, okay, so I'm not a pro, but it's a, it's sort of like a way to make more interactive visualizations. So when I was scrolling over, the numbers were displaying. Uh, and you can also like choose if you want to display a single point or all the data at once. Does anyone else have anything more to say about? It's pretty new, Plotly, anyone? Yeah. HTML, HTML, yeah. Yeah, it does, and you get a JavaScript file. Um, yeah, it's cool. It's still pretty young, I think. So I look at the documentation, I'm like, why is no one asking this question? But that's also kind of cool. So, oh right, I just wanted to put up this slide. Yeah, so um, my email address at work is horribly impersonal, but n5875 at lapd.online. So that's where you can reach me, and if I can't answer it, I can try and find someone who can, and that's my GitHub, I'm on social medias, yes. Do you do any interaction with the GIS group, like the GIS group that's all like, <laughs> In another lifetime, I also work for the federal government, but I'm not really intera interacting with them, but maybe I can meet them at some point, yeah. Cool. Thank you.